Welcome to Nurture the Mind. We have a special, two special guests, actually three special guests. We have Olivia Allen and Ethan Humble and my cat Miller, and we are doing a class project for COM311. Yes. And it is all about dating and mental health and how COVID has impacted students. So are you guys ready to get into it? Absolutely. Let's, let's explore it. Who wants to go first? What would you find? What was interesting to you? First, we're going to talk about dating, and um, I think, Liv, you had a good interview with... Yes, of course. So I interviewed a friend of mine who goes to Iowa State University. She's currently a junior. Her name is Chloe Borman, and she actually was in a relationship um, throughout most of quarantine um, this past summer. Um, her boyfriend had an internship in Cedar Falls, and she was working in Ames, so that was roughly five hours apart during that period of time. Um, he actually did end up coming back to Ames and they stayed together for the remainder of quarantine. And yeah, before they were together in the apartments, they utilized something called the Netflix party extension, which I thought was oh, yeah. something I hadn't heard of before speaking to Chloe. Um, and it's on Chrome. And basically what it does is it puts whatever you're watching in sync it's mm -hmm. sort of, think of like Zoom, but they're also watching a show, so they can communicate back and forth while the show is on the screen with both of them. So mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. Um, they use like a chat room to discuss the show while mm -hmm. it was going on. Um, again, something I hadn't heard of, something that is just a prime example of how couples are kind of adapting to be forcing to be separated during this time. Especially um, plus distance for that couple, because mm -hmm. they're yeah, no five kidding. hours apart. Definitely. That's going to be rough on top of COVID. Yeah, and if the two are working, which yeah. kind of just adds another element. It's um, just no time. No time. How, how did they meet each other? Because if met. it was in summer, so that was still, COVID mm -hmm. was still a thing, it wasn't like, oh, February is when they met. Yeah, no, they actually met... Um, through the fraternity, sorority, um, Chloe's in Tridel. I'm not sure what frat he's in, but they met somehow um, through that. And I asked, I specifically asked how she felt that COVID-19 has affected their relationship and like what the hardest obstacles were to overcome during this time, which obviously I feel like all couples in quarantine face some sort of obstacle, whether that be communication, just pure loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, and she said that at the time, she thought that Jesse and her had grown together a lot through the pandemic, and they were able to persevere through those strains of the relationship um, while they were separated. Um, which is interesting because uh, recently found out that they are no longer together. <laughs> so, so there's that. <laughs> so there's that. But I, I can say with confidence that I... It, that had nothing to do with COVID-19, specifically what we're talking about, which is dating during quarantine mm -hmm, and self-isolation. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously they were able to be successful in that regards later on, maybe not so much, but uh, very interesting stuff. I also asked her what they did um, together as like, you know, how they were able to quote, go on dates during, um, COVID-19 with some new restrictions during businesses um, and they said that they spent most of their time outdoors which I think is pretty common for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, they were able to enjoy things like tanning, hiking, and hammocking which is something that I think I never realized I myself I enjoyed as much as I do it just because you know I never really thought oh I'm bored let's go hike mm -hmm. until I was basically locked in my own house. So. Yeah, right. And then right. you feel like you're going insane and you do anything to get outside. Yeah, yeah definitely. It makes you really grateful for everything that you have outside. Because mm -hmm. even on campus at the beginning, we weren't able to eat like indoors. Yeah. We had to eat out in the park or something. So that was nice. Yeah. Uh, this may be a personal question, but were they so were they still like five hours apart when they decided to split? No, they or actually so split. The, they're back on campus now. Okay, oh, so I was okay. wondering, like, in my so, head, I was yeah. like, because, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard, but, like, not just for college students, but a lot of families have had, like, domestic abuse rise, like, mm -hmm. suicide, all those sorts of things happen during COVID, and I was wondering if, like, maybe they were around each other too much, and then that ultimately led to them splitting up. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I didn't ask, so yeah. I'm not going to speak. So we don't have to <laughs> spill that, the beans for everybody's yeah, relationship actually, on the podcast. It was yeah. when they got back together. Um, 
but it is, again, just interesting to see how they were able to keep pushing on during um, the time that they were separated by five hours, especially that Netflix watch. Yeah, that's cool. I've I heard of that cool. before, and it's a really good thing to use if, mm -hmm. you know, you're further away with the distance. Even without COVID, it's probably something that people will probably be using in the future. So. I didn't even know that existed until you brought that up. It's neat. I don't know who I would hop on there with, but that's cool. Hey, but it's an option. Go find that lady one day, Cole. <laughs> one day, man. One day. I'm good. I got my cat right now, so. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it over from here. Okay. Um, I chatted with um, first-year Bethany Alexander. She was to uh, Iowa University, so over in Iowa City. And she had a pretty interesting dating experience during COVID herself. So um, she dated one guy... Um, who is now her ex from March through August. But we didn't talk about that too much because, you know, closed wounds already. But mm -hmm. we uh, talked about her current situation. When she came onto campus, she was single, obviously, from that relationship. And now she found a guy on Tinder who she hooked up with. And then they decided after that that they would try out a relationship. <laughs> so kind of an interesting progression there. Interesting segue. Yeah. yeah, you know, the, the first date led to something so physical. It's Wait, like, so did she use Tinder before that, or was this her first time? Like, did she want to get on there because of COVID? And... I can't say yes or no to that. I would assume so, because it sounded like she had been with this guy for a while, who she mm -hmm. was with prior, so maybe it's a rebound. I don't know exactly, but it could be. we'll see. You know, as when I had talked to them, they were together for about a month, so... You know, that's, strong. that's not bad. That's at least something. Um, but she said that Tinder was really easy on a college campus that you could just find people right away, especially with like the Tinder University. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever been on, but it helps you like find different colleges that are nearby by you mm -hmm. and find students that would specifically be more compatible to you at those certain places. Mm -hmm. So it tells you where they're like going to college and it's nice for that too, just so you know that they're around your age range. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they met through Tinder, and then eventually they would talk for hours, and then really nothing is open as far as like different places to go for dates. So they've just been kind of like keeping a low key, chilling in each other's rooms. Mm. Um, but yeah, said that it's just been really tough to date now, especially with a new relationship during this time, trying to get through the, you know, the early dates. It's just yeah. kind of more chilling and sitting around and i feel like that honeymoon phase um is specifically the time that you always want to like go out and get like dinner or go out to a movie or something mm -hmm. at least that's how it was for my relationships but um seeing that even during that you know happy honeymoon phase you really don't have a lot of romantic options right now. right mm -hmm. which is tough maybe that's why people are willing to explore it much quicker like you said that girl hooked up with him and then started dating like i don't know i mean that's up to people's personal point of view but normally that's kind of something exciting to like look forward to later in the relationship like you end up right. getting up to that thing right that, so that makes certain like, bond so i don't know maybe people yeah. are just along with craving just being around people you know yeah, to Unless, feel love, yeah. to be romantic with somebody, everybody wants that. And I think it's just making everyone a little more impatient now, especially at this time. For sure. There's <clears throat> not a lot else to think about, rather than at the other times you could go out, you could be with your friends, and it kind of serves as a distraction as mm. to like, oh, maybe I don't have someone right now, but it'll come. But right now when you're trapped alone, you know, your mind kind of drifts places. And I mean, this is kind of off topic, but I just want to ask you guys personally, like, how have you felt during this semester? Like we, so last semester, I'm assuming both of you guys were there. We got kicked out for that last month. Mm -hmm. Right. How, how do you feel like the atmosphere is and how you've done personally? Because I feel like it's pretty odd. I'm glad that like, since the students are wearing their masks, like I haven't seen anybody that yeah. is not abiding by the rules, but like, I don't know, just feel, feels odd. It feels different. Like, yeah, I definitely think it feels a little off when you're looking around and you can't even see half of someone's face. It's yeah. Like, are they really who I think they are? Because <laughs> yeah. you can't really determine. You can't conclude. Or like this for professors, is. like looking out into a crowd where you can't see people smiling or like right. reacting. Right. And I think that would go along with dating too. Is like if you were, just say you're a guy and you're going to approach a girl like in person with a mask, like you're not getting that social cue of like her smiling and that's sort of like her you know, kind of okaying you to come up and talk to yeah, her and make her first like, move. She'd be like gagging, you have no idea. 
relationships with the younger girls, the yeah. freshmen who are new, and I, I learned all the freshmen's names, like, honestly, probably on, in October, like, towards the end of our fall season, and that's, you know, that's not good, but it's just because I can't match a name with a face if I see them on campus because their faces are covered. Yeah, right. the same thing for, like, team morale, like, that's the huge part is, like, mm-hmm. building that camaraderie with your team and getting to know each other, going out, doing events, eating together, like, all those s- small, simple things that maybe, like, before COVID right. we took for granted, but realizing how we operate as humans, we're social creatures, like, you know, that starts to wear on us at some point, yeah. even if, like, you know, your mental health hasn't taken a huge, significant dive. Like, I feel like everybody just feels off and weird. For me, personally, I think it's just, like, if I have spent a few days not really talking to anybody, whether it be on campus or anywhere else, like, when I finally go out and run into somebody, it takes me, like, ten minutes to, like, figure out how to do that again. Right. Because I think in some way we're, we're training ourselves to, like, evolve in a different way to not talk to humans through COVID. How yeah. weird this year has been. Right. So. Right. And I actually, I had um, some stats from PBS that I found. Um, says a study conducted by Match found that only 6% of singles were using a video platform to meet a potential date before the outbreak. 69% of singles said they'd be open to chatting over video with someone they met during dating. Um, and this is the one that really got me, is that 22% of these respondents even said they'd consider entering an exclusive relationship with someone they hadn't met in person. Damn. So that just shows how <laughs> times have changed in the dating world, that yeah. you're ready to commit that much faster. Mm-hmm. I think, like, if you were doing dates over videos, that's kind of nice. Like, you kind of can control that. You could do, like, maybe, say, five, and then, depending on how long they are, you kind of feel like you're starting to get to know somebody. But, at the same time, when you do meet them in person, you're still probably going to have some jitters that right. will occur. So, but I don't know. That may that may be a good way to mitigate it. I mean, that's always like the scariest thing when you go on a date with somebody for, for the first time. Right. I've never been on a blind date, but like that's a crazy night for me. I've never been on a blind date, so hey. <laughs> Rock on. I have a couple stats too. By uh, it was conducted by the polling and research company One Poll. Um, titled How COVID-19 Has Changed the Dating Game, and this is some really interesting stuff. So 42% of people in relationships not quarantining with their partner have um, downloaded a dating app. And 52% have signed up to a dating website. So yeah, really shady stuff. (laughs) Um, And it even, it goes on a little further and it says, a third of those in a relationship have reached out to their ex at some point. 37% of singles have two. Wow. Um, and this is also really interesting given what we just talked about. Um, 67% confess that social distancing has increased their craving for physical intimacy. Oh, well, there so you go. So basically kind of confirming the idea that people are a lot more anxious to just kind of like jump on that aspect of the relationship. Right. Um, and there's one more. People in relationships were 40% more likely to use Instagram to sneakily slide into an ex's DMs than a single person. Oh my god. Which, as someone in a relationship, I hate to hear it, but <laughs> you know, be... I'm sure most would. Uh, yeah, no kidding. That's. But what, okay, but what about COVID would make that acceptable? Like, if you are in a relationship, what is increasing people's desires to go talk to their ex? Uh, or, like, download Tinder to. <laughs> Two time the person that you're with. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's it really weird. Doesn't. So yeah, weird stuff. But I mean, there's some insight on how people are dealing with this. No but kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to go to Dakota's? Yeah, go to Dakota. Okay, so Dakota is from Iowa State University. He is a senior, and so in the dating realm, we talked about a girl that he met at work 
but I think that they were just more or less kind of like fooling around with each other. And now recently, like, you know, a few weeks after we've already completed the interview, they're not even like talking anymore. So okay. kind of with all three of our interviews, they started and then something fell off at some point. But I don't think him and her were ever too serious. They were more or less kind of doing what a lot of these people seem to be doing. It's like they're just craving some sort of interaction with another human mm -hmm. being. On top of, you know, we also want to, like, date people. Right. We want that. Um, right. But more or less, like, what I got from him is he's actually kind of enjoyed this time because it's freed up a lot in his schedule. And he's taken, instead of, like, he's an introvert. So instead of socializing with people, he's taken those emotions and tried to put them into his art or, like, his craft. Like, he does photography, graphic design, stuff like that. And so, and he said that it's been a benefit to him to kind of like be away from people, which I think introverts, you know, they can survive a lot longer than extroverts can. But right. at some point, you're still going to want to go out and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was looking into that as well for different like articles I was writing. And I'm very into the Myers-Briggs personality. Yes. And so looking yes. at the difference between the introverts and extroverts with COVID, it's just. Have you taken it? Yeah, I have. What what did you get? I'm an ESTP, so an entrepreneur. Okay. So ESTP. I'm yeah. ENFP. Okay. So that's. I think that's what I am too. Extroverts, intuitive. I know P is perceiving. Yeah. Feeling. Yeah. 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 And I was like, I think ours is like. Wait, is there two a T? Th yeah, no, I think I might be ENFT or something. The yeah, last one e. is either P or J because J is judging. There is a T. Also E, E, N, T, J, maybe? Because the T would be the third letter. I have no idea. Anywho. It was close. It's interesting. Goals. Like, yeah. it was close to goals. It's <laughs> interesting, though, because, you know, taking that test, for one, reveals a lot about your personality, but you can see yeah. how you can interact with other people. Yeah. So that's interesting. And it varies so much from person to person that I think it's really fun to look at. But what right. about since you mentioned that? Yeah, um, and then Sincere, I think that's the Yeah, so one. I talked with Sincere Davis, he's going to the University of Dubuque right now, um, and he just wanted to talk a little bit about dating as well, so he's currently single, but I thought I'd bring him up in this story because he's experimented a lot with online dating, so mm -hmm. he knew that the risk of the pandemic would be forefront in his mind when dating. His parents are both high risk, so he has to make sure that he's always staying safe for their own sake. Um, and this was back when I think he was um, traveling home quite a bit, so he was worried about that. But he didn't really want to risk it as much, so he didn't spend too much time on dates. He dated one girl for a while, and they wore their masks the whole time, and they used hand sanitizer and everything. He brought that up a lot, that he would always make sure that he's wearing masks and sometimes even gloves when he's going out. So he's playing it way to safe, which is doubling down. Good for him. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that was going anywhere. So then he took to Tinder, Bumble, um, just finding different personalities, and he was just having fun meeting new people. So he's just kind of, unlike our previous sources, kind of like just taking it easy right now. Mm -hmm. kind of That's interesting. Just playing the field a little bit. Does he feel impatient at all? Did you ask him about that? I don't think so. No. I think he's content with just keeping the contact to a minimum, but just being okay with meeting new people. Cause yeah. That, yeah, that kind of reminds me of um, my interview with Joe. There you also. go. Good transition. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I also talked to Joe Lasher, who is a junior at St. Ambrose University in Davenport, Iowa, which is where I'm from. Um, he He's kind of the same way. So he he's not really seeking anything out at this time. Um, as far as a relationship, but he does say he'll, you know, find moments where he craves kind of that, like, validation from other people. Right. Um, maybe just a little attention, which, you know, we all do. So, yeah, he said he'll hop on, like, Tinder, Bumble, Grinder, something like that, just to, like, you know, get, some, get right. some of that validation to hold him over. And then, but other than that, he's he's not too upset with the fact that he can't go out and, like, grab coffee with someone, grab dinner with someone. Mm. Um, it's not really a high priority to him um, right now at this point in his life. So I thought that was interesting too. But we talked a little about what he's doing with his friends. And he says that he is lucky enough to be in the same building with, I believe it was three of his friends. Um, and then in the others, they're sure that every activity they do, they're safe. You know, they're wearing masks. Mm -hmm. They're 
distancing, and he said that his school, St. Ambrose, they're also doing, you know, a pretty solid job at encouraging certain activities where students can still have those face-to-face -face interactions, but at the same time, not put themselves at risk for right. COVID-19. Right. So. so there's been a lot of talk about how much this is affecting, like, just the college experience in general, mm -hmm. and, like, how we're not able to have all these different sources of entertainment come on, like different magicians, comedians, you know, I think of all the cap events that we have on campus mm -hmm. and how those have all been impacted. A lot of students are like, well, this is ridiculous. Why would I go to campus when I'm not getting that kind of luxury? Yeah, which is actually a great point because I talked to two freshmen and one of, so Maggie Leisure, uh, I think she's from Kansas. And she's a first year, and that was pretty much the biggest topic is that, like, she's at this point now where she's confronted with these questions on if she should leave Simpson, and she's trying to figure out, is it just because of COVID and, like, you know, like, because everything's compromised, or is it that, like, I actually hate college? And so it's just kind of interesting, especially from a first-year student's perspective, like, that is the time to get out it's not to say that if you don't do it that year that you're not going to make friends or, or join clubs or be a part of events or anything like that. But that is like the, that is what you want to do when you get on campus to kind of start and get yourself outside of your comfort zone and meet people. So like right now, you know, for her, at least all she really has made friends for is from her classes, mm -hmm. which right. there's so many other opportunities to meet people. You talked about your sister being a first year. Yeah. Um, well, and then you being on the softball team, right? Yep. You know, and so like all the newbies, like you said, you didn't actually yeah. know who they, you didn't know their name until like October. Yeah. So I kind of feel really bad for first years. Like I thought like, yeah. it's hard on everybody no matter what, but like I was feeling sorry for myself. And then after talking and then I'll get to the other girl, but, uh, Maggie Leisure, like, I'm like, you know, there's. I shouldn't be complaining this much. Because right. It's, it's just it's so much harder because, like we were talking about before we started, it's, they don't have that base of people that they can go to. Like, right. us returners, we have that group of friends that established people. Yeah. And hopefully, like, we're living with them or near them enough to where we can go out and socialize with them. But right. if you're coming here on your own, like, it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough to come out here and not have anyone to go and lean on. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then I guess I'll just transition to the next Maggie, Maggie DiCarlo, same thing. She is a first year and, uh, she more or less, what we talked about was how her mental health has taken a significant dip and kind of same thing with Maggie Leisure is she's only made friends from classes, but her difference is that actually like her roommate doesn't spend a whole lot of time in their, um, not apartment, but dorm. dorm. And so she's not seeing really anybody at all other than the people in her classes. And so the night that, because a lot of my interviews were, I would just go up and talk to a random person that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so these two girls, I had no idea who they were. I didn't message them before. I just went up to them and talked to them. And she was uh, in the computer lab in Harvard, I think. And um, she told me how from our conversation, like that made her entire week because she just hadn't been talking to people up until that point. And like, again, like it kind of, it hits you in the heartstrings because it's it's really sad in a way that she is not able to, you know, even get like a glimpse of what the quote unquote college experience is. And right. so, you know, she's like, yeah, I'm depressed, but, you know, I'm still, you know, trying to make grades and whatnot. And like, I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with anxiety or depression, but like, it's really hard to push through those moments when you have other obligations. And I just, I kind of wonder how freshmen but also just students like how they're figuring out how to do that you right. know like you got to be so resilient in a, in a in a year like this where everything seems yeah. to be going wrong it's got to be making people real tough just emotionally and kind of closing off a little bit too i think like we're getting far enough into the semester where if you haven't made a ton of friends now you're probably just like you know i'm almost at the semester now just yeah. looking forward to going home so. Yeah, one thing I've noticed, and also I want to get your guys' opinion on it, is I felt like at the start of the semester, like, I was really amped, like, every time that a new semester starts, like, I feel really good, and I felt very disciplined, I was getting, like, homework done, like, on time, all the time, and then I feel like as, like, right now, I feel like I am slacking off so much towards the finish line. Do you guys yeah. feel that at all? Absolutely. And I, I th that's a normal thing, too. I mean, yeah. that's going to happen any semester, but I think it's just amplified a little bit more now since yeah. everything's online. And you're not really, 
Like I feel a lot more obligated to my work with in-person classes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and for calm for this class, we haven't met in like what, like two, two, three weeks, something yeah, like that. Like right. Two weeks or so. Which was, that was nice because it was like the first thing I did in the morning was at least went to class and was mm -hmm. around people. You know, it just kind of got What's me going. On? Whereas now it's like if we have class online, you know, it's like kind of hanging out for a few hours before I hop on Zoom. It's just it's just harder to get the day moving when you start your day like that. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm the type of person, and I'm willing, like most people who know me know about this, I'm not shy about it, but I have diagnosed a uh, major depressive disorder, um, and I'm on medication for it, but I find that I need, like, I need to be busy, or mm. else that's when I'm going to get real low, and re like, you know, in not a good place, and that's really what hit me very hard over quarantine is that I had nothing to do. Well, not that I had nothing to do, but I couldn't do anything. The first, you know the mean? first, re well, okay, we haven't had two quarantines, so that first time. Yeah. 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 Do, do you feel home. that at all this semester as yeah. you come back to college and you haven't been able to be around people as much? Kind of, yeah, kind of in the sense where with Zoom, like, with, like you said, Zoom classes, it's harder, like, once I go to class, I'm like up and at them. Like I'm being productive. Yeah. Whereas like if I'm in my room, yeah, I have my Zoom on, but also I'm just like. And <laughs> kind of like, there, kind of not there. Same thing right. with, you know, I'm in a lot of extracurricular organizations and going to those meetings, you know, it forces me to go out and be productive. And yeah. all of these meetings are online. I'm just like, I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's very true, and I think, you know, we kind of have a small uh, pool of students that we've talked to, but I think this would just kind of be the general thing that you would find with everybody, is that now you kind of, we still have a lot of open and free time to kind of let our mind wander, and like you said, like, I, I'm the same way, I gotta keep myself busy, yeah. which is, like, hard in some sense, because I think that you should be able to wind down every once in a while, not have to constantly push, but... It's, I don't know, thoughts are frightening. Yeah, they, uh, it's, it's weird because you have all of this downtime, but it's like, it's like an internal struggle because you have all of this downtime, but at the same time, you're still expected to complete and, you know, do all of these tax, tasks that you would normally do um, pre-pandemic pre life. You know, mm. you're still expected to attend this meeting, turn this in, do this research project, but at the same time, like, you're just kind of stagnant so it's like you have so much going on and you're mentally exhausted but then you're still not like you're still chilling it, it's weird i yeah. don't know how to describe it like i hope that made sense but no it does yeah. well yeah when it, it's hard to describe mental health and just how you feel in general but yeah this whole year has kind of been one big cluster fudge absolutely uh, I just wanted to bring up like some statistics for um, mental health. So I looked at the Journal of Medical Research, and they conducted interview surveys with 195 students at a large public university in the U.S. to understand the effects of the pandemic on their mental health and well-being. Of the 195 students, 138, 71% indicated increased stress and anxiety due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Multiple stressors were identified that contributed to the increased levels of stress, anxiety, and depressive thoughts among students. These included fear and worry about their own health and of their loved ones, which was 179 out of 195, so 91% reported negative impacts of the pandemic. Uh, difficulty in concentrating, 173 out of 195, 89%. Disruptions to sleeping patterns, 168 out of 195, 86%. Decreased social interactions due to physical distancing, 167 out of 195, 86%. And increased concerns on academic performance, 159 out of 195, 82%. To cope with stress and anxiety, participants have sought support from others and helped themselves by adopting either negative or positive coping mechanisms. This article was posted back in March, but ongoing studies have been conducted since this one. So kind of, again, just wrapping up everything that we were talking about you know I, know I know it's 195 students so it's not like okay we have like a bunch of people to pull from but everybody is dealing with this on on some basic level mm -hmm. and if you've never yeah. dealt with mental health before i think a lot of people are starting to figure out you know Feel like a wake-up call yeah, yeah right and it's it's interesting i had a friend of mine texted me one day and she was like how did you know you were depressed i was like uh, well, <laughs> oh, <laughs> here's what it feels like in a nutshell for me. And then she was like, well, I'm just, 
you know, I'm feeling, I don't want to like expose or anything, but she was like, well, I'm feeling this. Like, I just, I'm not motivated for anything. And I don't know why. And I'm like, well, yeah, like this is really stressful stuff that, you know, this is just not ideal for anyone, especially like when you're in the, what many consider the prime of your life, like mm -hmm. college years where you're supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. having fun. And she, like me, is a very social person. So I think she was just really feeling the brunt of all of this, um, just having to contain yourself. Um, so yeah, I just think it's hitting everyone, no matter mm -hmm. if you've dealt with that type of stuff before. Um, and I just, yeah, it's hitting everyone in the worst way possible, I think, at some point. Right. That was, I mean, I don't mean to bring politics into this, but considering what was going on for our next, or the election that we just had, that was like kind of one of the biggest things I thought about was like, you know, if they, they decide to close things down again, like how are people going to handle a second round of quarantine? And yeah. for us living in Iowa, so I'm assuming what you've experienced with depression on top of just like a major depressive order, living in Iowa in the winter and not having the sun and not being able to go out, mm -hmm. seasonal depression kicks in on top of depression. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like, you know, as COVID cases are ramping up at this point even more, and I think Governor Reynolds has made some announcements on some mm -hmm. restrictions. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's like, so, so that was bad, and we're, you know, people are suffering now. What is it going to look like if we decide to close things down for the winter months when we yeah. really can't go outside in Iowa because yeah, right. of the snow and the cold? It's so tricky because, at, like, at the same time, like, I don't want to have to quarantine again. Like, that is, you know, that's not what I want to do. But I also want this to end and if that's if the only way that that can end is through you know an enforced like a mask mandate quarantine whatever it's like you want to see the light of the end of the tunnel but the way to get there is you know not ideal not fun for anyone so it's like you're just like stuck and you, yeah. there's just no easy answer for any right. of this and that's I the think. hard thing because not everybody's gonna be willing to comp or uh yeah, compromise by wearing masks because they think that that is like some infringement upon their freedom of rights or whatever, which like, I don't know. We all want this to end, obviously. Right. right. I mean, I think there's certain situations where maybe you, you should have the choice. I don't think we should ever mandate it, like mandate people to wear a mask out in public. But at the same time, like, like I said earlier with Simpson, like everybody, every student, every professor has been wearing masks. I have not seen one person take off their mask on campus. So yeah. In that sense, like, that's actually really impressive that we've kind of come together and we've kept our numbers relatively low for the entire semester until just, like, a few weeks ago. Right. Started popping up. I, um, transitioning into more of that mental health angle, I found um, quite a few stats on a KFF tracking poll. This was conducted in mid-July. said that 53% of adults in the U.S. reported that their mental health has been negatively impacted. So a little different than your stats, but different polls, so it makes sense. And that's a lot higher than the 32% that were reported in March. So it's gotten significantly worse over time. It also shows that um, people have had difficulty sleeping, 36%. 32% um, have had difficulty eating. Um, increases in alcohol consumption or substance use at 12%. And worsening chronic conditions at 12% as well due to worry and stress over the coronavirus. So it shows that not only like mentally are we struggling but that's leading to a decline in our physical health as well mm -hmm. so transitioning back to like our interviews now i chatted with kylie dunny she's a sophomore at luther so private school we haven't gotten too many of those but um she said that it's hard to meet as many people during covid in different common areas in the cafeteria because that's like the only places right now at least at luther that are open for her she's telling me about how they're closing everything else down and how, I mean, that's very similar to what we have here at Simpson, but that it's just really difficult because you have to wear your masks everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, feels for the freshmen this year, just like you, Cole, since it's hard to branch out and get a new group of people to stick to um, because Kylie's sticking to her main group of friends mainly. Um, says that she was able to play tennis this fall and got a full season in, but everything being virtual just makes the college experience tougher to come by. So yeah. it's just a lot to it. Um, is there any, you, you talked with, uh, Ellie Olson. Yes, I, I did. That'd be an interesting perspective to get because she is a counselor. So like, what did yeah. you find out with her? So I saw that counseling is almost all virtual now, mm -hmm. um, with different rooms being designated on campus as like counseling rooms. Mm -hmm. So you can go over zoom to make sure that students have a safe space to discuss anything that may be happening mm -hmm. within the room. 
Um, counselors are busier and have seen more students since the pandemic started back in March. They had counseling over the summer as well, available to all students online. So mm -hmm. that's another way that people have been, I think, being able to chill a little bit is over the summer. Enrollment has gone down, but counseling has still gone up. So that's mm -hmm. interesting that we have less students here, but more people are seeking counseling than last year. Right. COVID is inflaming previous sources of counseling, and it's making people more reactive to common issues that they were facing before. That's what Ellie Olson was telling me, is that there's not really anything new that's kind of sprouted from COVID necessarily, but rather it's just making it worse and enough to the point where they're willing to seek help, which mm -hmm. can be a good thing that you're able to talk about it then, realize, well, this is a problem that's happening in my life, and COVID just really amplifies that. Do, uh, do you mean reactive in the sense of like, you know, common stressors that we would have as college students, like yeah. homework, uh, relationship conflict, stuff like that? They're just more reactive? Just more way. reactive, yeah. Okay. Just like, darn, this is happening to me, now this is happening to me. I think yeah. it's just making people feel a lot more dependent on what's happening right. rather than taking control over themselves, which is totally understandable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it seems like there's a lack of balance to be found among students, which I don't know if you could ever find right. like complete and utter balance, but it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's just hard. <laughs> yeah. I do think it's kind of, well, obviously the circumstances as to why it's happening, but I do think it is kind of a good thing that more people are utilizing uh, counseling services on campus, um, just because I think it's always healthy. Like, I'm a firm believer that everyone, whether you have a diagnosed mental illness or whatever, should you know, see a counselor at some point, just mm -hmm. to get some uh, reassurance and clarity on some issues. Like, everyone has their struggles, so I right. think talking to, like, a licensed professional is, you know, really healthy for everyone. Um, I would be interesting to see the um, gender divide on those stats, yeah. which I don't think she could even disclose that anyways, but no. I think I'd be curious to see how many more men are using um counseling services simply because of the stigma surrounding, you know, men with mental health and mm -hmm. men with, you know, right. emotions. So that'd be something interesting to find out if the information was available at some point, but yeah. And like, I just, I just personally went to counseling this fall for the first time since I came to Simpson and I'm not alone. I know that for sure that a lot of my guy friends are going to counseling and just talking about things just like you were saying, it's just good to let it out mm -hmm. and just realize, like, it's okay to talk. So it. so counseling is separate from, like, typical therapy, right? Or do they kind of, like, overlap with it's, each other? It's essentially the same thing. Like, Ellie is a licensed psychologist. Um, okay. She's, um, yeah, she, I, I don't know if she was previously a therapist, but um, from her, I guess, accolades and accreditations, it's essentially the same thing. Right. I know like whenever we talk we refer to it as therapy so yeah I think you know whatever word you're more comfortable using but yeah well I was just wondering because for me personally like I've done therapy and I've been doing therapy since last November um, and, I, and I agree I think uh, even if you don't struggle with mental health although that is why I went there I think it's important to go there and kind of have at first, you don't know them, so it's like a third party that you've never met, and they can kind of be unbiased, and then they can turn you in the right direction of your negative thinking. But I think it's important right. for people to vent and get those things out. And like you said, like that's a very relevant topic with uh, men personally because there is this stigma around them expressing emotions, just as it's kind of weird for like girls to be assertive. Those, mm -hmm. for some reason, those traits don't coincide with their gender. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's important for everybody to seek out a therapist if, or a therapist or counselor or whatever at some point. Uh, I think it can only get better right. after that happens. Yeah, and she gave me four tips to help stay mentally healthy during this time. Mm -hmm. The first was to adjust expectations. So to make sure that you're just, you're acknowledging that things are gonna change and that you're willing to adapt to that. Um, the second is to create a structure because during this time it's really hard to have any sort of like a plan for what's gonna happen throughout the day, that you're able to have set things during the time to know what you're doing. It's like you were saying, when I'm the same way as both of you guys, that I need to stay busy and I have to make sure I'm doing something or else my mind kinda of slips into a sadder, more depressive state. And that's like a good way of knowing like, I have this to do at this time. It just gives you a little more control. What do you, what do you guys do? Like when you have gaps of free time, say like two or three hours, like what do you do? Like do you, so you write a schedule? For the day or you 
try and plan out what you're going to do? I mean, kind of try to, but yeah. it really just depends on the day. Some days you're going to have gaps of hours where I'll generally fill it by trying to find something around campus to do. Like mm -hmm. lately I've been going to a lot of the Simpson fitness classes, mm -hmm. so that's been one way I've gotten to go. Cool. Cool. It's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, or going for a run or something. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just been exercise. Or sometimes that's good. I'll go and I'll just say, that's great. hey, let's go out and grab a food, grab some food and then... <laughs> <laughs> grab, a food. grab some food and maybe just sit down and chat a little bit yeah. just to have a little more of that social dialogue going on but yeah that's I great know, i don't know about you live but yeah i try to structure my day um do you write a schedule the kick kind of the kicker is how much i stick to that <laughs> right um, right but yeah i during my gaps i'll usually my roommates are pretty much in the room the same time as me mm. most of the time if i'm not with my roommates i'm usually at the y with my friends working out and then once i get back at least one of my roommates are usually there um but yeah i just try to fill that with you know i'll play with my hamster or i'll go visit one of my friends dogs um <laughs> Right. Play with dog, right. and um, I'll try to do some homework, maybe watch some something on TV. Um, I've been trying to make my own food a lot more because not only does it like fill time, but it gives me like it makes me feel productive, which like I said earlier is really important for me. But it also like oh I did that. <laughs> yeah. I can cook. Yeah, I mean, it's good to learn different things. I think, you know, the smart people kind of took that as an advantage for this year. Like, try things that they never have before. Mm -hmm. For sure. I'm not, good, I'm not good at cooking food, so I could definitely, like, take some lessons. I definitely should, too. Yeah. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, the third tip she gave me was to focus on what you can control in a world mm. where it's everything feels like a variable. We never know what's going to happen. Like, when this vaccine is going to finally come out, we're going to see some progress towards getting to the end of this. So just focusing on what you can do to help better yourself. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, just to maintain connections, just reaching out to friends or, you know, your significant other on a consistent basis and making sure that, you know, people care about you and making sure that everything is going to be all right at some point. <laughs> I think the positive side of social media and technology is that we have these apps where we can connect with each other and like Zoom, like what would we do if we didn't have that during a pandemic where we couldn't yeah. FaceTime each other, we couldn't talk to each other, we didn't have phones, we couldn't call each other. I mean, that's one of the few ways that I've been able to stay sane. Like it's not that I talk to people like every week, but try and reach out to as many people as I can. It's a lot easier. It definitely is. Yes. Yeah. I can only imagine if I didn't, we lived, you know, 50 years ago or so when none of this stuff happened. And yeah. Just show up to people's houses. Oh, it's ridiculous. Ah. Write letters. <laughs> <laughs> Snail mail. But that's what I got from Ellie, so. Okay. Uh, did we, is there any other interviews that we missed? I mean, I went through. We covered all. everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any other thing you guys forgot? Anything else you want to add or talk about? I feel like it was, you know, the direction was supposed to be dating, but... I feel like there are a lot of hurdles with that this year, so I felt like, for me personally, a lot of my interviews turned towards mental health. You're right. And that's relatable to everybody, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it all kind of also came down to just interaction with other people, which yeah. falls obviously under dating, but then it's a big part of people's mental health as well, so, yeah. Yeah, it really does just show how much one leads to another, that mm -hmm. if you have that success in dating, your mental health is probably going to be better as a result. If you're having yeah. good mental health, you'll probably have a better time dating. So, yeah, I mean, just if you're able to focus on one, it'll probably help the other, you would think. Yeah. What do you guys personally think is going to happen for next semester? What are your wishes? What are your expectations? Or like you said, yeah. maybe we should just <laughs> adjust our expectations and not prepare for another semester kind of like this one was. Oh, I think the expectation for me is to not get my hopes up, to know that we're yeah. probably going to come back and we're probably going to be back in orange phase when we can't see as many people and we're forced to be essentially to our family units, yeah. which is our roommates. And I'm expecting that that'll be the way for a while until we finally have a breakthrough, which who even knows when that's yeah. going to happen. But I think for me, I'm setting my expectations low so I can only be impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I expect to come back kind of just how we started this year with Orange Phase, which for me is fine. Like, I'm totally okay with that as long as I'm on campus and, you know, with my roommates, being able to at least, like, see people and 
basically just not be at home. Sorry, but um, uh, yeah, I'm totally fine with yeah. starting the year off as we did this mm -hmm. year, and then hopefully, you know, things turn up. I won't try. I won't try to hyper focus on that because then I don't want to. Like you said, I don't my hopes to be built up and then only to be let down. But yeah, just kind of planning on Orange Phase and. I can't say that I'm too upset with that, honestly. Yeah, I guess it's probably different because you guys are a little bit younger and still have a, a lot. Well, when do you graduate? When do you touch graduate? I'm a sophomore now, so I have two more years after this. Okay. I'm a junior. So next semester is my last semester, and I took a year off for my first year. So I went to DMACC, got my AA degree, then transferred to Simpson, and then I took a year and a half off after my first year at Simpson. In that first year, I still live with my parents because I'm from Indianola, so I never really immersed myself in the college experience. Like it was easy to go back to my parents' house. I didn't join any clubs. I wasn't really involved on campus, and that was my main thing that I wanted to change coming back. Um, you know, to finish my degree, and so it's kind of I don't know. There's not really much that I can change. I joined a frat, so I hope that there might be more to do with that next semester. But, uh, yeah, a lot of what I anticipated coming back here is probably not going to happen. Yeah. But you, you guys, I think, you know, you'd probably be able to break out of it before you graduate. Of like, you hope. <laughs> I, got, I got no time left. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it. Anything else? No. Well, thanks for stopping by my crib. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks for having us. Thanks for meeting my cat. Um, yeah, that's it. That's Nurture the Mind. That's uh, I didn't even say our name in the beginning. The la lady and gents. No, you didn't. I didn't. That's okay. It's all right. Anyways, all right, guys. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.